शरणम गणे 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 नंदन गणपति गणे शिवनंदन गणपति गणे शिवनंदन गणपति गणे गौरी गणे सुमा महेश पार्वती नंदन सिद्धि गणे गौरी गणे सुमा महेश पार्वती नंदन सिद्धि गणे पार्वती नंदन सिद्धि गणे Okay, so today's story comes from the Bhagavatam. In the Bhagavatam, there is a great sage by the name of Dadhichi, Dadhichi Rishi. His father was also a very great, great Atharvana Rishi who, who compiled Atharva, Atharva Veda. <coughs> and anyway, this Dadhichi made the ultimate sacrifice. How there is a story of Indra, the king of the heavens, who was displaced and overthrown by a great demon. His name was Vritra. Vritra. Vritrasur. He came there. See, Indra was sitting on his throne like that. Indra is always sitting on his throne. Rajati, he reigns, you know, people who have high position, they, they like those high positions. If they get a demotion, they are devastated, you know. So, Vritrasur came there and gave him to treat Thapar, get out. And he threw him out. <laughs> the great monster came and threw him out. So, you now Indra and all his cohorts, all his ministers and cabinet. They were roaming everywhere. Homeless. They became homeless. You know, like we have homeless people on the road. So like that they became homeless. So Indra went to Brahmaji and, and said, oh, look at this thing. What, what, look at our problem. How? And Indra is, this happens to them quite regularly. Why? Because they do bad things. When people do bad things, they get bad things in return, isn't it? <coughs> and this world is full of suffering because of that only. <coughs> people do wrong things and the result come back. And so Indra and Agni and Vayu, Ityati, all of them, they go, they go doing all sorts of things. <laughs> and so they get the result of those bad things, you see. So quite often he is thrown out from his. Second thing is he is attached to power. He is attached to power. And whatever we are attached to, that thing will be taken away by some design of nature, like that. So now this Vritrasur came there and beat him out, chased him out, uh, and now he became homeless. And they went to Brahmaji, and Brahmaji said, there is only one weapon which can kill that Vritrasur. That is called as a <coughs> Vajra, one Vajra, but that cannot be any ordinary Vajra. Thunderbolt, you know, like when you see Hercules have that Thunderbolt thing. So Indra also has that Thunderbolt, but Indra's Thunderbolt, when he his own thunderbolt, when he threw it at that Vritrasur, that Vritrasur caught it and ate it. <laughs> he swallowed it like nothing. So Brahmaji said, you know, only one thunderbolt can kill that Vritrasur, but that thunderbolt has to be made from the bones of the Tichi Rishi. You have to go to that Rishi and ask him for his bones. 
And when you take that, that bones, you take it now to Vishwakarma, who is the architect of the heavens. You take it to Vishwakarma and tell him to make that thunderbolt. So now they are thinking, if anybody come and ask you for your bones, you will give? Bone? Yeah. What? My bones? You came here to pick a bone with me or not? The, who will give their bones? So they went, now hesitatingly, they went to that Rishi, the Dichi, and they asked, we want your bones, please you give. Because such and such is a, is a situation, we are in trouble. But the Dichi Rishi, Rishi knew, and he said a number of things. One is, in any case, this body is going to drop sooner or later, right? It will die. Then what will happen? They will put it in fire. And it will burn and turn to ashes. And that will not be of any use to anybody. The only thing you will waste firewood. You will waste some firewood, you know, because you have to burn all this. And in India, firewood is very expensive, you know. Firewood is not a, something... So... In any case, the body is going to die and it will not be of any use. So better I make it of use to all the gods, all the devatas. And the Dichi sat like that and meditating on the absolute reality, he departed from that body and merged with God. And the body dropped and the gods took that body and took out... Well, they are not very good at surgery, so they took that whole body now to Vishwakarma. And Vishwakarma extracted the bones from the body and he powdered that bones and mixed it with other things and he made that powerful Vajra thunderbolt and he gave it to Indra and Indra came once more and he picked fight with that Vritrasura, yeah. He picked a fight. So the Vritrasura thought, what is this? I beat him so many times already, he came this time to die or what? Again he came to pick fight with me. But Vritrasur did not know that Indra had the ultimate weapon. And so, he released that weapon and killed that Vritrasur. <coughs> the story is, this story and the Raja Shivi, Raja Shivi story I have told you already. These two stories are the greatest stories of sacrifice and seva. Sacrifice and seva. So this one is sacrifice. He is, he sacrificed his own body for the benefit of others. See, in this body there is some strength, some energy, right? Shakti. So sometimes we sacrifice our time and our energy and our money and we sacrifice those kind of things. Our patience sometimes we sacrifice. We don't have any patience, but we want to do something for. So we sacrifice many things. People in the world sacrifice many things. There are so many people who come to this ashram and do so much of seva. They sacrifice their time and their resources and so many things. Just now when we had the food fair there, people sacrifice so much. So sacrifice of time and energy and money and knowledge and we sacrifice for others, right? But imagine one who has to sacrifice his whole body. I tell you, in this world there are so many people who want a kidney. And we have two. But we don't want to sacrifice even, even one kidney, isn't there? Everybody has two. We don't want to sacrifice because people are scared and so many things. But see the Dichi. His whole body he gave. Because you can't get the bones without the body. You sacrifice in the whole body. You know? He will just be some flesh floating in where? No skeleton? That would be more scary than a skeleton. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he gave his whole body. What a great, that is the greatest example of sacrifice in our Shastras, the Dichi. Ready to give the whole body. And who for the benefit of others? Loka Sangraha, it is called in Bhagavad Gita. Loka Sangraha means for the benefit of Others. Otherwise, human beings are born selfish. We are selfish to the bone. 
<laughs> See where the term come? <coughs> so now he gave up all his bones also. So no selfishness. Hmm. All right. So remember the Dichi. And I hope you remember Raja Shivi, who I told about last time, who cut his flesh to weigh the same amount as a dove or that pigeon. Okay. Inspiring stories to make us also make great sacrifices in life. See our Gurudev? 43 years. Going all over the globe. Sacrifice his own health and sacrifice all his whole life just for others. And what he got in the end? Nothing. No. Such people don't look for anything in return. Okay, that is true sacrifice. Okay, now hurry home. You have to go to your class. Your teachers have sacrificed to come to teach you. For free, you see. जानिके सुमिरा पवन 
कुमार बल बुद्धि विद्या दे हर हु कले स्वीकार जय हनुमान ज्ञान गुण सागर जय कपीस्तु लोक उजागर राम दूत अतुलित बल धामा अंजनी पुत्र पवन सुत नामा महावीर विक्रम बजरंगी गुमति निवार सुमति के संगी कंचन वरन विराज सुभेसा कान कुंडल कुंचित केसा हाथ वज्र औजा विराज कांधे मूज जने साजे शंकर सुवन केसरी नंदन तेज प्रताप महाजगवंदन विद्यावान गुणी अति चातुर राम काज करिवे को आतुर प्रभु चरित्र सुनिवे को रसिया राम लखन सीता मन बसिया सूक्ष्म रूप धरी सिया दिखावा विकत रूप धरी लंक जरावा भीम रूप धरी असुर समारे राम चंद्र के काज सवारे लाय सजीवन लखन जी आए श्री रघुवीर हर शिवर लाए रघुपति की बहुत बड़ाई तुम मम प्रिय भरती सम भाई सहस बदन तुम रोज सगावे अस कैशी पति कंठ लगावे तन का दिक ब्रह्मादि मुनीसा नारद सारद सहित अहिसा जम कुबेर दिक पाल जहाते कवि को विद कर ही सके कहाते तुम उपकार सुधी वही कीना राम मिलाय राज पद दीना तुम रो मंत्र विभीषण माना लंकेश्वर भय सब जग जाना जुग सहस्र जो जन पर भानु लील जो ताई मधुर फल जानु प्रभु मोदी का मेरी मुख मानी जल्दी लांग गए अचर जनाही दुर्गम काज जगत के जेते सुगम अनुग्रह तुम्हारे ते थे राम दुआरे तुम रखवारे भोतन आया बिनु पैसारे सब सुख लह तुम्हारी सरना तुम रक्षक काहू को डरना आपन तेज समारो आवे तीनों लोग आंकते कापे भूत पिसाच निकट नहीं आवे मावीर जब नाम सुनावे ना सही रोग हरे सब पीरा जपत निरंतर हनुमत वीरा संगत ते हनुमान छुड़ावे मन क्रम वचन ज्ञान जो लावे सब पर राम तपस्वी राजा जिनके काज सकल तुम सारा और मनोरथ जो कोई लावे सोय मित जीवन फल पावे चारो जुग पर ताप तुम्हारा है प्रसिद्ध जगत उजियारा साधु संत के तुम रखवारे असुर निकंदन राम दुलारे अष्ट सिद्धि नव निधि के दाता असर दीन जान की माता राम रसायन तुम्हारे पासा सदा रघु रघुपति के दासा तुम रे भजन राम को पावे जन्म जन्म के दुख विसरावे अंत काल रघुवर पुर जाई 
जन्म हरि भक्त कहाई और देवता चित्तन धरई हनुमत से सर्व सुख करई संकट कटे मिटे सब पीरा जो सुमिरे हनुमत बल वीरा जय जय हनुमान गोसाई कृपा कर गुरुदेव की नाई जो सत बार पाठ कर कोई छूत ही बंदी महा सुख होई जो या बड़े हनुमान चालीसा ओ यसी थी साखी गौरी सा तुलसीदास सदा हरि चेरा की जय नाथ हृदय महादेरा की जय नाथ हृदय महादेरा पवनत नय संकट हरना मंगल मूर्ति रूप राम लखन सीता सहित हृदय बसव सुर भूप सियावर राम चंद्र की जय पवन सुत हनुमान की जय उमापति महादेव की जय बोलो भाई सब संतन की जय 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 राधा रमन हरि बो 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 धर्मन हरि बो जय जय राधारमन हरि बो जय जय राधारमन हरि बो जय जय राधारमन हरि बो 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 सच्चिदानंद रूपाय विश्वोत्पत्यादि हेतवे तापत्रय विनाशाय श्री कृष्णाय वयम् नुमः श्री कृष्णाय वयम् नुमः ओके नो वी सिंग स्कैन टू टेन ऑफ भागवतम 
all the leelas of Bhagwan Sri Krishna. Leelas include many things. Important ones are the leelas include the slaying of so many of the evil perpetrators in society. Those who now see this is a something which is there from time immemorial, isn't it? All societies have had to remove evil ones from the society. Today we have a lot of debate about all of these things, you know. Big groups who are against capital punishment and all sorts of things. So big a lot of questions arise with regard to all of these things. Well, I keep telling the Rishis were very, very realistic, realistic people. And in the whole debate about capital punishment and removing certain elements from the society and all of that sort of thing, one has to remember that sometimes death also forms part of the reformatory process. And reformation, when you have to, they say, the modern argument is what? No, 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 somebody doing something wrong. You take him and you put him in some institution and you reform him, right? You put him there. So then the whole society now has to spend money to reform that person. Everybody has to pitch in a little bit to reform. But you must remember that sometimes death also is part of that. It means to say, but remember, death is that which infuses in that person the greatest fear known. Hmm? Death infuses such a great fear in a person that that fear itself has the capacity to reform that person. So sometimes, especially when he knows that death is coming, this little point is forgotten about the, the power of the reformation, of the power of fear in reformation. But every type of, or every means available were used by the ancient ones. Every means available. It, Bhagavan Sri Ram tried to reform Ravana by words. Oh Ravana, give up your, even in the last moment, give up these evil ways. Surrender Sita Ji. His own brother tried. But sometimes it doesn't work. Hmm. Like this Vritrasur. Brahmaji gave the right uh, advice because next thing he'll go for Brahmaji also. <coughs> His demons, you don't know who they'll. Basmasu tried to kill Lord Shiva also, isn't it? So, in, in evil, there are no limits, they will do anything. So they try to reform, to rehabilitate, and all that kind of thing. But sometimes, and people get uh, upset about these things, you know. Those, especially those people who are very vehement about abolishing capital punishment. They get very, very emotional about, uh, oh, I'll kill him. Why did he kill him? Why didn't he reform him? <laughs> Acha, we'll give him to you, you reform him. <laughs> yeah, we send him in your house to live there. You reform him. <laughs> every day, cold-blooded murder, every day. Yesterday, day before yesterday, two days ago, in Gurgaon, outside Delhi, right there, the bus conductor slit the throat of a seven-year-old. Seven years old. In a private school. Now who? Nobody has control over that. Now people are protesting and burning shops and all sorts of things. Riots going on. No. This type of thing and all. It, and it, uh, one more thing, it should not be done, this is a very important point in the whole thing, eh? that should not be done from the point of view of revenge. Eh? It is not that 
Okay, he took somebody's life in the society, therefore we have to take his life back. That is not the point of view of the rishis. The point of view is, here is an element that is a danger to society. Just like when there is a disease or cancer in one part of the body, that is a danger to the rest of the rest of the body. So we have to... That is, this is the only standpoint of the, of the Shastras. Huh? If there is cancer in one arm, and that one arm is threatening the rest of the body, then what you'll do? What is the logical thing to do? Remove that arm, isn't it? So in the same way, if there is anybody in the society who is threatening the society itself, that he is going to remove so many elements of the society, so many members of the society, then we have to remove him. That is, that is why, on that is the basis on which Lord Krishna told the, Kaurava, the Pandavas to remove these Kauravas. So much of reformation and so much of rehabilitation and all that kind of thing, we try. So we say now, we say, Sama Dana Veda Danda. We try Sama, we talk nicely to them. We try Dana, you know, give some incentive. We try Veda, we try to scare them into conforming, like that. But there are many people who are not scared of anything. Huh? Some fellows, some people are going to the gallows also and they're not scared. But when the Yamaraj comes, everybody gets scared. <laughs> so that is part of the whole. But he will have to know also that in that last moment, and people are really, like you see some of these terrorists, they are saying, right? These terrorists, they kill like anything indiscriminately in the name of some dharma which they are protecting and all, right? And they are scared of the little silliest thing. What silliest thing? They tell them, okay, we are sending women soldiers to kill you all. <laughs> when a woman kills one of those terrorists, he doesn't go to heaven. So he's afraid of being killed by a look at the little thing which he's scared of now. He's just afraid of being killed by a woman. So fear is in everybody's heart. They may appear fearless. All these terrorists and all may appear fearless, but it is not true. As long as there is duality, there will be fear. That is only a, a big farce that they are fearless and all of these sort of things. Fear is in everybody's heart until that person has become one with God, realization. So they talk about being fearless and this and that and all the other things. But and they are scared of little, little things. So, the part of the Lord's Leela, you know, his play and his whole sojourn is to remove evil from the society. That's why Paritranaya Sadhunam Vinashayacha Dushkritam to remove the wicked. Otherwise, why the Lord will take avatar? Just for just like that? He had nothing to do, so he took avatar. <laughs> just to do something, na. So he takes avatar for this reason. So then, part of his play and lila now is to bless devotees. So paritranya sadhuna. Sadhuna, to bless all the devotees. The devotees have done so much of tapas and so much of austerities, this, that. And they need to get the result or the reward, like Shabari, Kevat, all. All the Giragastya, Muni, Sutikshana. So many devotees have done so much of tapas. So the Lord also blesses them, give them darshan, all sorts of things. Hanumanji. So. Vibhishan and Sugri, so many wonderful devotees are there throughout. And then, so one is to remove wicked and to bless the saintly, the pious people. Then, in his Leela, there is the great play which we know from Bhagavatam with the gopis. So now we have reached that portion there. Great Rasalila and Gopis and all. 
Then before that, there is the, his flute, his basuri, playing that basuri, which made everybody go. His tantalizing basuri, that flute. So in the tradition, the flute also has a very nice place to see. Now this is chapter 21 of the tenth canto. In this book, it is one page 129. Page 129. I don't know who has this book. So now if you jump there to number three, you'll see that. Tadvrajastriya Ashrutya Venu Gitam Smaro Dayam Kashchit Paroksha Krishna Sya Kashchit Paroksham Krishna Sya Swasakhi Bhyon Varnayan Tad Vrajastriyaha, all the women of Vraja. The women of Vraja means the gopis. Ashrutya, having heard this Basuri, Venu Gitam Smarodayam. Venu Gita means the sound of the Lord's flute, which, which was bewitching. I don't know if you call it bewitching. Sound also is bewitching. <laughs> Smarodayam brought great feeling of love and inspiration to their heart. Kashchit Paroksham Krishnasya Swasakhi Bhyaha Anva Varnayam Varnayan means to say Krishna's flute tantalized their mind and brought in their heart great love and inspiration and all such things. And now among themselves they started talking, what is the magic of this flute? How this flute makes us feel so good? What is so magical about this flute? And there are many, many stories surrounding this flute of Bhagwan. Yeah? Lot of stories surrounding this flute. Means to say, I told you in the tradition, anything that comes in contact with Bhagwan, that thing also becomes Jeevit. Jeevit means alive. Like Bhagwan Shank is alive. Jeevit. Bhagwan is like electricity, you know. <laughs> Not shocking, but uh, <laughs> you can't say shocking. The Lord is like electricity, electrifying. He's electrifying. Because if electricity touches this, this thing starts conducting electricity, isn't it? So anything that electricity touches, it goes in. So like that, anything the Lord touches, that thing becomes alive. So his flute, so one day the gopis and all, they approach this flute. Why are you so fortunate? And see, you have Lord Krishna keeping you in his waist all the time, then in his hands, then in his lips, playing such sweet sound from you. Oh, how come you... You have this fortune and we don't have. This is unfair. So that flute said, you see, first of all, I stood up in the hot sun there as a bamboo, right? Blazing for years, standing there with no complaint. First thing. Second thing, then that flute maker came there and he chopped me. And again, I did not make any complaint. Then, cut me to pieces and then started boring holes inside of me, you know. Seven holes. And then one on the top. Seven holes there and then one on the top also, eight. And all of that I went through very silently. There's a wonderful story like that, you know. The, the murti on the top, 
the murti was made of marble and the, mur the floor was also made of marble. So one day this floor telling that murti, both of us are made of marble. Look at this. And people come here and they walk on me, they throw rubbish on me, they bring their dust on me and everything. And oil fall on me and all sorts of things. And nobody pays attention to me. And you are made from the same marble because both of us came from the same mountain. Same marble. And do they bring flowers for you? They bring prasa and I eat them for you. Nice food, all their choices, ghee and, and nice laddu and be, barfi and pera and all things they bring for you only. And incense and they do puja and put chandan and they sing aarti for you. And look me. He said, I think the Lord has been unfair. So that Murti said, the problem is when they were cutting you to make that floor, you complained too much. And when the sculptor was sculpting me, I took everything. He was chipping away at me, chip, chip, chip. And I did not complain. So the one who bears all the chipping of sansar, because sansar will chip, 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 chip. That's what sansar is there for, isn't it? Sansar will chip at us. Chip at us means what? Some people will say this about us, some will say that, some will, you know, say the other thing, some will abuse. Sansar, that's what it does. Get us angry. I know, and we now, we complain for every little thing. So the Murti said, I did not complain. So then after that, all that chipping, 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 I became an object of worship. And you, any little chip, ah, you get angry and you're bawling and screaming. How dare you cut me? Don't touch me without cutting. Like that. Everything. Don't touch, don't do that. Complain and scream at everybody and then he was screaming at the, at the stone cutter so he did not become an object of worship like so the one who is able to bear all and in sanskrit we saw this very simple thing they call it titiksha huh? sahan shakti sahan shakti means the ability to bear without complaining to bear without complaining. So that one becomes an object of worship. So the murti on the top day became an object of worship because of that. So the bamboo is telling the same thing to devotees. You all did not know the story about murti? <laughs> and he made all of these holes in me. Second thing, you know, after chipping, chip, 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 chip. Second thing, I keep my inside hollow. I keep my inside hollow. You gopis and you all people of the world, your inside is full of all sorts of likes and dislikes, calm, growth, mother, love, rag, dvesh, ityadi, all desires and all anger, jealousy, pride, this, that, likes and dislikes. You have too many inside. So now, if your inside is full with all of this and anybody blow into you, what kind of tune will come out? If your inside is full with... See, <laughs> if there's a bamboo and it's full of rubbish inside, right? And you blow from this side, what type of smell will come out on the other side? Rubbish only. <laughs> Garbage smell will come out. So the Lord is blowing through all of us. We are all the bamboo. All of us are the bamboo. Huh? And he's blowing through all of us. But our bamboo is filled with. So the, the absolute reality spirit is blowing through everybody. It's blowing in, through some people in the form of evil and wickedness. It's blowing through some people in the form of goodness. Whatever we have inside. The breath of the Lord flows over that and comes out. You see, the wind is passing, right? Over the whole land. So when the wind passes over a chicken farm, 
You, those who live here, you know that well. Ah. When the wind passes over a chicken farm and, and it comes the other side, what it brings with it? Yeah, terrible smell, isn't it? And when the wind passes over the Ratkirani, the Ratkirani means that, that night flowers, that flowers that blooms in the night. Huh? When the wind passes over that and comes on the other side, what it brings? That sweet scent the whole neighborhood gets? That thing. So whatever we have inside of us, huh? when the, law, the spirit is blowing over that, and that is what comes out in our personality. So some personalities are very, very, very sweet, and some personalities are not so sweet at all. Comes out, uh, what do we say? Well, you know all the different type of personalities are there. The same spirit blowing through every flute. And whatever is inside the flute. But the bamboo flute now is the best. Why? The bamboo flute is empty. I don't have any wish of mine, any likes or dislikes of mine. Whatever Bhagwan blows, let him blow. Like that. The bamboo flute is the best. Like, totally empty. I have no wish. Like the devotees in Ramayana we are seeing now. They all tell it. Pra Prabhu, you tell. We put our wishes aside. And you tell what. And we'll just follow. That even Vasishta, the great guru, also told to Rama. You tell. We'll just follow. Hmm? King Janakons, all of them. So, that is an empty bamboo flute. The idea is the flute becomes the ideal for all of us to follow. Empty ourselves and let the Lord work through us. Otherwise, we have so many desires and so many likes and dislikes. And I tell you something, right? And when we have all of these likes and dislikes, whatever we like, we don't get. And what we dislike, that is what we get. So a flute with likes and dislikes, if he only likes to play bhajan, he'll end up in a chutney show. And the one who likes to play chutney, he'll end up in bhajan sandhya. <laughs> bhajan sandhya. So what? Be empty. No likes or dislike. Let Bhagwan play the tune through us. Then we'll come out sounding sweet. Otherwise, we come out sounding bitter. The way to not come out sounding bitter is to become better. Instead of becoming bitter, become better. Become better means what? Empty ourselves like this flute. Huh? So, the Lord played his flute and, and there mesmerized everybody. See the next line also. Tat varnaitumarabdhaha Smarantya Krishna Cheshtitam Nashakan Smaravegena Vikshiptamana So Nripa Nripa means O King. So that means to say the sage is talking to the king, Parikshit Maharaj. That Tat Varnaitum Arabtha, they started describing the sound, the mesmerizing sound of this flute. And remembering Krishna Cheshtitam. Krishna Cheshtitam means all the activities of this Krishna, who was himself bewitchingly beautiful and captivating in every, form, in every way possible. They started remembering a Nashakan Smaravegi, you know, by remembrance of the power of remembrance of the Lord's Leelas. Vikshiptamana na Ashakan Vikshiptamana Saha Nepa. It means to say that they could not uh, uh, describe for that. They became, their minds were so taken up in remembering the Leelas of Lord Krishna, they could not speak anymore. They could not tell anything. 
further. They have to cease. And then see number six. Iti venuravam rajan Sarvabhutamano haram Shrutva Vrajastriya Sarvaha Varnayantyo Bhire Bhire Like this, becoming totally enthralled, mesmerized by the flute of Lord Krishna and becoming absorbed in thinking about Krishna also. And so the flute then, the Rishi say, is further besides the symbolism of the fruit the, the Lord's call to all of us it is the Lord's call all the instruments played in the tradition the bell, the shankar, the flute the drums all the different types of instrument now if you notice huh? The, the subtler the instrument, the subtler the call. Huh? So in the case of the flute, the sound is made from air, which is subtler than a drum. The sound is made by hand and, you know, solid things like that, drums. But in the flute and in the shankha, the sound is made by air air passing through some other gross thing but had it not been for the air the sound will not come so the subtler the source of the sound the subtler the call the, the, in other words those type of calls will make an impression on a subtler mind and if the mind is gross you need some grosser sound you see some grosser uh, source of sound. So it's a solid thing. So you you notice this. And that, it's amazing. The flute is the most amazing thing, I tell you. This thing has nothing inside and that sound comes. What are they, what are thing, I tell you. So it shows then from all of this that the gopis of Vraj were very, very subtle beings also. Subtle beings. To be so mesmerized by this subtle sound. Totally mesmerized. Loss of consciousness also of this world and what was around them and all that. So totally mesmerized by that sound. See, these are all very good measuring rods all good measuring rods in the world. What attracts a person? Bhagavan says in Gita, a rajasic person is attracted to rajasic food. A sattvic person is attracted to sattvic food. A tamasic person is attracted to tamasic food. And therefore, when Kevat is going, uh, not Kevat, Guha is going to meet Bhagwan, he takes fruits and roots and bulbs and then he takes all fish and meat and all the other thing. We're going to meet a Bharat, sorry. Going to <coughs> then he's thinking, let us see now which one of these food Bharat will, will take. If he takes this sattvic type of food, we know that his mind is sattvic. If he takes this rajasic type of food. And there are many places in this world people eat snakes and worms and beetles and cockroach and Fried cockroach, crispy, crunchy. That also make a good jingle. Crunchy cockroach, <laughs> and crispy cockroach, crispy crunchy cockroach. One fellow took an, his friend to a, a, a chocolate shop, and everything in that shop was made from chocolate only, eh? only chocolate. So they had chocolate snake and chocolate dog and chocolate cockroach and chocolate beetle and chocolate elephant and everything chocolate. So he gave him the chocolate cockroach. He said, you try this, try this. 
chocolate cockroach. That fellow took a bite. He said, tastes like an ordinary cockroach to me. <laughs> But anyway, <coughs> whatever the person, the person, whatever type of mind that the person has, he will be attracted to that type of food, that type of music, that type of clothing, that type of discussion, that type of environment, that type of everything. All depending on the mind. This is a truism. Eh? You'll have five different foods there. If his mind is satric, he'll choose the satric one. You'll have five different types of music. If his mind is satric, he'll choose the satric music. And that goes for everything. Colors. Colors also. The type of mind will choose. And he goes to buy some shoes. And he goes to buy some pants. Depending on the mind, he will choose that type of. And then speech. Everything. He will speak. It's a trick. Always be, what to tell you, you know? That is how things nowadays. Where I go say, a day, di day, di day. Don't sick like anything. A trini, you meet a trini in Miami airport or Toronto airport. You say, how you going there, boy? Well, where I go say, Swamiji, a day. I'm sick. And, and, and let me tell you one more thing. Tamas and Sattva, they resemble very much. Eh? <laughs> you have to be very careful. Tamas and Sattva resemble very much. Eh? Many times, Tamas comes disguised as Sattva. You have to be very careful about this thing. Eh? Like, for example, you know, the uh, people who are being oppressed, people who are being oppressed, for instance. No, we have a higher understanding, you know, just to keep the peace. <laughs> we want to keep peace and all of that. That is Tamas, this guy, that's Sattva. Eh? Just to keep the peace and all. And that's why I say, you know, those who are in the face of oppression, those who are silent, that is not sattva. That is only tamas. So like that. So you could see now, the gopis were so mesmerized by this very subtle sound of air. You see, space is silent. The other element after space is air. So if the sound can be produced by air, that means the sound is more subtle because space is subtler. Air is the next in line. Mm. <laughs> then we have the next one is fire power. You know, it's like <laughs> the sound of fire. You know the sound of fire, like firing gun and firing cannon and firing bombs and all kind of things. That that kind of sound. Mm. And then you come down, down, all. And that's why you say we have hard rock and metal. You see that coming down all. Hard rock and metal. Have you heard this type of sound? No? <laughs> eh? Heavy metal, yeah, yeah. Heavy metal. And hard rock. Hard rock is caveman movie, I'm sorry, I'm music. Hard rock is caveman music because they, they used to beat rocks in the old days to make them. So I'm beating rocks. They got? Yeah. Hard rock. But as you go higher and higher up, see how just under the Basuri is things like the string instruments and the violin and all that. That horse hair they put on that string and that thread to make that so horse hair. So fine, refined like that. So the refinement of the mind of the gopis is shown also to be moved by that very subtle instrument. And then it moved them in which direction? It moved them in the direction of being absorbed in Krishna being absorbed in the Lord. So he called, his calling is there, and they got absorbed in. Now this calling for all of us, the Lord is calling from all different directions at all times, eh? in so many ways. 
in the morning the birds come to call who you train the birds to call or what who put them there in the morning all the birds come in different sounds also they are calling maybe you don't understand this one maybe you could understand that one there is one bird there i tell you that bird exactly like called the yellow bird yellow bird like he's calling really hey jago utt jag musafir bhor bhai you wake up jo sovat hai jo jagat hai so pavat hai jo sovat hai so khovat hai kabhi daji has written oh traveler means one who is going on this journey of spirituality a journey of life wake up you are sleeping so the flute is calling everybody to to wake up like that see bhagwan's flute is mysterious thing and so much of story and so much of literature comes around that flute eh those who are awake they will reach the goal those who are asleep they are lost forever in the sansar so that is the idea okay now the most wonderful story comes now after the basuri is the lord stealing the clothes of the gopis now see this will be chapter 22 22 see from number 4 now in the middle of the page number 4 katyayani mahamaye katyayani mahamaye mahayogin yadhishwari नंदगोपसुत देवी पति मे कुरते नम मंत्र जपन्स्ता पूजा चक्रु कुमारी का व्रत चेरु कुमारी कृष्णचेत भद्रकाली सर्चु भूयानंदसुत पति what it means now these gopis who first of all let me tell you before we continue in that thing you please remember because what happens is many western people when they read these passages here they without understanding the whole picture of bhagavatam and the whole tradition and all they make all sort of comments and all one first thing whatever is going on here this is krishna is still living in varaj he has not gone to mathura he has not grown or anything he is 7 years old right and this story comes uh, this stealing of the clothes of the gopis and all that comes just after all the killing of how many demons we saw one demon after the next all of that so the placing of it also is well, well done by ved vyas ji meaning to say after all the impurities have been removed from the mind uh, after all the impurities removed from the mind now this story comes it means to say pure mindedness is there in both um, in, in the gop gopis and all the other people of ayodhya and so one has to study the context in which the whole thing is given now what he did all these gopis decided to do a katyayani vrata for one month masam katyayani vrata worship to mother durga katyayani durga 
Durgakshama, Shivathatri, Jayanti Mangala Kali, Bhadra Kali, like that Katyayani she is called. And what was the, why were they doing this Vrat? Vrat means fasting, taking bath, doing puja, fasting and all of that sort of thing, right? Specific times of the day. Katyayani Mahamaye, Mahayogin Yathishwari, Nanda Gopasutam Devi, Patimme Kurume Te Namaha. Te Namaha, salutations to you, O Devi. We want these gopis now. Gopis, word is given there in the next. Kumarikaha. Kumarikaha means all these young women. We want our husband to be Lord Krishna. Now, these are grown women. And you'll want your husband to be the seven year old boy. That is what they are praying for. The idea is, as you know, that doesn't make any sense, isn't it? So they're praying for moksha, actually. They're actually praying for moksha. Well, our husband should be Krishna. Or, from the spiritual standpoint, our mind should be wedded to the Lord and not wedded to this world. Our mind should be wedded to Bhagwan. So they did this vrat and were, they were praying for this thing. Now, what they did? Eva masam vratam cheru kumaryaha krishna chetasaha bhadrakalim sama narchuhu bhuyananda sutta patihi. Bhagwan Sri Krishna. In, came there, and all these gopis with their mind fixed on him, he came there now. Now see number 7 and 8 also. Just continue down in the next page. Nadyam kada chida gatya Tire nikshipya purvavata Vasam si krishnam gayantyaha Vijahru Salile Muda Well, they of course, all of them removed their clothing and kept it on the bank there and went in that river and what played Jig Vijahru Salile Muda in great joy now, all of them came there, took their bath before their morning puja and all the different things. And they went inside there, playing. Then, Nadyam Kadachit Agatya, at one time, one day, Tire Nikshipya Purvavat Vasamsi. They left their clothes on the bank. That's what I mean. Huh? Now, see the next one. Bhagavan Stadavipretya Krishno Yogeshwareshwara. Krishna Yogeshwari Shwaraha Vyasyaira Vritas Tatra Gatas Tat Karma Siddhaye Very nicely with Vyas he has put Krishna came there with all his friends surrounded by his friends Vyasyatra Vritasya Avritaha Tatra. He came there surrounded by all his friends. Who is Yogeshwara Ishwaraha? Yogeshwara Ishwaraha. That Lord of the universe who is called as Yogeshwara, the master of yoga. Yoga means the master at bringing together the devotee, devotee to merge with the Lord. That is, and then he came there, see? Gatastat Karma Siddhaye. He came there to bring to all the gopis the fruit of their action. Which action? This one month? Vrat. Hmm? To, to make sure that their karma bore result. See? Gataha tat karma siddhaye. To make sure that their karma was successful. In other words, he came there. Because they've been doing this Vrat. Bhagavan. Tada Abhi Pretya Krishna. Krishna Abhi Pretya means he came. 
presented himself there. No. You know, he went there. This is a very common thing in the Bhakti literature. What is that? Suppose the devotee has to do, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. He has to do this vrat or do this ritual or he has to do this rite or this mode of worship or something he has to do, right? He has to do all of these things. The Lord, sometimes in his compassion, wherever there is any deficiency or something is preventing or blocking, when I mean, he has done nine out of ten, and that tenth one he is not doing properly or something, the Lord comes there to help that devotee also to remove that whichever obstacle is there to, because he had done very nicely one till nine so the Lord's grace works in this way also to come to help that devotee along the way so now <clears throat> this is exactly what is going on in this story they are doing this vrata and these are very very great devotees absorbed in Lord Krishna all the time these gopis and they do, did this vrata for a month but Sometimes the devotee himself overlooks certain things. In doing, sometimes we ourselves overlook certain things because either we they tamas or nobody taught us properly. There was no proper instruction and guidance and all of that sort of thing. So there are many times in our past we overlook many things. So here the Lord came to give them the fruit of their action. They have done this vrata. But what a way to give the fruit of his action now. He stole their clothes. He, all, they left their clothes on the, on the shore, the, on the banks there. And then, Tasam Vasam Supadaya Nipama Ruhya Satvaraha Hasadbi Prahasan Balaihi Parihasam Vachaha Atragatya Balakamam Swam Swam Vasa Pagrihyatam Satyam Bravanino Narma Yadyuyam Vratakarshitaha. He telling you have become you are uh, Vratakarshitaha. Vratakarshitaha means you have become thin by Vrata. Means they have not been eating and all. They have become skinny. All of you call them Vrata Karshitaha. You you all, you yam. Vrata Karshitaha, who have become so skinny and thin by all of this Vrata. Satya Bravani, no Narma, I am not joking. No Narma means I am not joking. I am telling Satya Bravani, means I am telling the truth. What? You all, Atra Agatya Balaha, Kamam Swam Swam Vasa Pragrihyatam. You all come out from the water now and come and take your clothes. They said, No. We will come out from the water. So, he said, well, Okay then, stay there and stay, uh, freeze. <laughs> because they are up to their neck in water and he has their clothes on a kadamba tree he's sitting there now come and take your clothes so they did not want to come out from that water then after persuasion and all they came out now unclothe all of them one by one and now they see this number nine. Uh, not nine, nineteen. This now is the. See, Bhagavatam itself gives the resolution to why the act is done in a certain way. One is the Lord is doing this to show that they. You want a certain result from doing all your vrata, all your spiritual exercises, you know, tapas, sadhana, all of this. 
you are looking for a certain result. But if somewhere along that you are doing something which is adharma, I told you, you know, the Lord will come also. See, you are doing one, two, three till ten. And there's some in between there, you're doing some adharma also. But that is going to prevent you from getting this result. So the first resolution to this is adharma. So that is given in number 19. What is this adharma? Yuyam vivastra yadapo dhritavrata. Vyagahate tat tadu deva helanam. Vyadvanjalim mudnya panu ta ye yem hasaha. Kritwa namo dho vasanam pragrihyatam. He says, This is Deva Helanam. Deva Helanam means, even though now you, all of you are Yuyam, Vivastra. Vivastra means without clothing. Vinavastra. Vivastra means without clothing now. All of you are gone and you are taking bath in this river, that is a disrespect to Varun Devata, the lord of all the waters. Now see, they are not thinking about you, they are doing vrata, but they are not thinking about dharma. You cannot do, do any act which is disrespectful to the deity of that waters. He himself, this is disrespect to the deity there. Hmm. Vyagha Vyagahata Vya Vyagahata Etat Tadu Deva Helanam Offense Deva Helanam is offense against the deity himself. Now what you do? All of you come out from there and put your hands on your head now. Like this. He told all of them. In specific instruction. So the first reason why he made them do that is to make them aware that they are transgressing dharma. Because a devotee may be on the spiritual path and he may be transgressing dharma and not know about it. Now, second thing. If you are looking for oneness with God, if we are looking for oneness with God, and we have so absorbed in that Lord, and this is the second explanation for this, huh? And we have so much of attachment to, identification with, and consciousness of our body. Well, that is the stumbling block right there. No, no such person is ever going to merge with, with God. You see? If I have so much of attachment and identification with this body, which such sadhak will ever reach God? So, this Vastra word which is given there, and Vesha word is the other word. Vastra Vesha. So, we have seen Vastra Vesha is like Kosha. Annamaya Kosha, Pranamaya Kosha, Manomaya Kosha, Vijnanamaya Kosha, Anandamaya Kosha, like that. Kosha Kosha is there. So, we are identified with all of these different Koshas, or these are called Vastras, Vesha, covering on the true self. So this is the explanation from the uh, adhyatmic level, from this level of the Atman. One cannot be identified with any one of these levels, or any, any one of these vastra of clothing. One has to be identified with the self. In other words, we have to approach God as our own true self, not as body, mind, or intellect, or any of these koshas and all. So one has to disidentify with all of them and identify with the Self. This is the idea. Okay. So, by engaging in this type of Leela, this is the teaching for all of us. Yeah. The teaching is so that we'll give up the identification with body. So now, that was a great lesson to the gopis because we, they're thinking of merging with Krishna, becoming one with Krishna. He is their master, he is their lord, he is their everything. 
but then still overly conscious of body. But that cannot be. You cannot be identified with Lord and identified with body at the same time. One will have to go. You see? So that's to remove body identification. That is the idea. Eh? So one is to show that that devotee is transgressing dharma. And second, to show that he, they have body consciousness even though, I see even such elevated jivas to identify with Krishna also still have body consciousness. That is an amazing thing. All right. We will see next week. <clears throat>